Hello everybody and welcome to this first look at iOS 13 running here on the iPod Touch 7th generation. I didn't install this on my personal iPhone 10 yet um, because I've heard that this beta is pretty glitchy and I just didn't want anything to happen and also I didn't want to have to um, erase everything on my phone because uh, with a beta like this it's best to restore it just so in case anything happens you don't lose all your content so I was okay with installing it on this iPod touch here um, so this is just a fresh um, restored version of the software and sorry that this isn't like a whole highly produced video I'm just doing it on my phone because I don't have a lot of time to record this and I do apologize for that uh, but let's just go ahead and jump right in so this was just announced on the 3rd, which was Monday, um, and it was a lot harder to install without a developer account than previous versions, like um, iOS 10 through 12, um, because they don't provide the configuration profile anymore. Just to download over the air, you actually have to use a Mac on 10.14.4 or later and you have to use the latest version of iTunes, and you have to install Xcode, so it's a huge process, and it was a giant pain, and that's why this video is a couple of days late, but it is here, um, and yeah, like I said, it's, it is really smooth, um, uh, haven't been experiencing too many bugs, per se, at least on this device, but of course it is, um, freshly restored, um, there are a couple glitches here and there. It's nothing like iOS 11 beta or anything like that, though, so it's not terrible. So I'm not going to do a whole in-depth video. I'm just going to talk about some of the key features here. If you guys do want to me to talk about more of the features of iOS 13, just go ahead and drop a like down below and comment about that. So let's jump right in. The biggest new thing in iOS 13 is the dark mode. So you can access this either by going to your control center and... Um, pressing and holding on the brightness or 3D touching. And you'll see we have appearance light. Just tap this to change it to dark mode. You can see that the wallpaper changes. There's a couple of new wallpapers. Um, some of them change with the dark mode and some of them don't. You can also see that just pressing in on these, there's a little bit different animation. It kind of pops in before it pops out. Um, another thing is that you can now um, quickly change your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings from right in here. So you can connect to devices just right in the control center, which is a very handy feature. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new wallpapers. So here's what dark mode looks like in settings, just all black. Um, of course, it probably looks really nice on the OLED displays because all the black pixels are off. It saves battery too. So go in the wallpapers, you can see there's a glitch here. It doesn't even show them. Um, so we get four new ones um, that are compatible with dark mode. Um, nothing else changed except the removal of the iOS 11 default wallpaper. So you can see, this is what it looks like in dark. And here is light. Let's go back out. So there we go. So I'm just going to film most of this video in dark mode. Uh, so it looks really nice again. Now, we didn't see a huge UI redesign like we did in iOS 7. Um, I thought if they were to completely redesign it, it would be in iOS 13. But unfortunately, we did not get too much. Um, it does look way different with the dark mode and this wallpaper especially. But um, as for just UI things, you can see there's the status bar is a lot cleaner. There's never going to be anything on this side anymore. Um, so you can see we don't have like iPod or anything. Uh, if we turn on some things here, if we set like an alarm, um, pretty much no matter how many things you put up there, if we put our battery percentage, uh, everything will always stay on that side. And if there's too many things, they will not move to this side. They're just going to disappear. Um, some of them will. There's also no ne more network indicator status indicator thing, which I don't really like but it does look clean. And then for app icons that I've changed, the contacts is now just one person, um, gender neutral, I guess, What is why they had to change that. Because before it was uh, both genders, I don't know. Anyways, um, reminders have also gotten an update, both in the icon and the whole app is new. 
Um, so you can see we got some different colored dots, um, less lines, looks a lot cleaner. Also new, slight redesign there, squares a little bit smaller, um, even though they just updated that one in 12.2. And then second page here, you can see we have the new Find My app, which combines Find My iPhone and Find My Friend. So if we go into this, you can see people and friend, or yeah, people and devices. And also, Shortcuts is now built in. You don't have to download that. Feedback icon looks a little bit different for the beta versions, although I did remember seeing this design in 12.4. The widgets look a lot cleaner, are all just one singular color, and you can use this little arrow to expand. Now going into some of the apps that have changed, first of all is Photos. So this one is completely redesigned, at least in the uh, Photos tab. Pretty much for you, albums, search, basically the same. Um, but here we have the new bar at the bottom. We can go to years, months, days, and all photos. You can also pinch in and out to resize. See all your photos there. Um, yeah, you can see what happened in years past or on, on this day or around this day. And same with months. So there's that, we can just tap in. Um, everything's really smooth, looks really nice. So yeah, that is Photos. Also, Reminders has got a complete redesign. So it's now using a new system entirely. So for devices that can't update to either iOS 13 or macOS Catalina, um, if you choose to use this new Reminders format, the, your older devices won't get updated. So. Um, it's going to be completely a separate system now, so some people might not like that too much, but we can see you got your, your list down here, and you can see you got today's scheduled all in flagged, and now flag them, um, so yeah, pretty much the same here, and add lists, there's a lot more color options, oh, and here's a new feature, which is quick path, quick path, yeah, so it's like swipe, uh, Obviously just, it's pretty easy to use, just like you'd expect. So a lot of people are gonna like that. I finally have it on iOS here. Um, going back to our reminders. So yeah, um, you can automatically detect information if you type in like, remind me to do this at this time at this location, it'll automatically put all that information in for you. Um, yeah, just little redesigns everywhere pretty much, notes even. So, not too different, but <laughs> again, the dark mode just makes everything look completely new. Another thing Apple is looking to focus on in this release is performance. Now, we saw a lot of performance improvements with iOS 12, and they are continuing with iOS 13, which is great. So, for devices with Face ID, um, unlocking your device is now 30% faster. Um, App downloads are now 50% smaller and app updates are now 60% smaller. And you can also be seeing an up to two times increase in app launching speed. And I will say it does feel very smooth. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm not used to this kind of performance on an iPod Touch with the A10 Fusion. Um, but it honestly feels smoother than iOS 12 even, which is impressive. Going back into photos, I uh, forgot to mention there's a lot of new editing tools for both photos and videos. So if we go in here, um, and just some really great tools. You got all the same ones here. Um, just looks a lot different. We got new ones like vibrance, uh, warmth, tint, sharpness, noise reduction, definition, and vignette. Um, some new sliders for those. All the same filters. Crop, you can now finally flip photos horizontally. And, uh, so straight in, you can also flip it vertically. Um, yeah, and then before videos didn't really have a lot of editing options, but now they get all of the same editing options as for photos. So I'm gonna need Wi-Fi here. Okay, so let's download this video here. And you um, can trim again. Um, you get all your different uh, adjustments here, which is really, really nice. Filters, as well as finally um, rotating videos. So I can do that. And also flip those and crop them as well. And straighten, so just a lot of great features. And then you can 
save it and it just is going to take a few seconds to save and there you go is your video and then videos also automatically start playing as soon as you tap on them if they're downloaded so that's nice and you can see um in your albums here there's no longer an all photos album there's just like recently saved um and this now uses a three wide grid so a little bit bigger there whereas these ones now use a five wide or three wide or one wide or just tiny so a lot of options other things maps is a lot more detailed now and it also works in the dark mode so it looks really cool um right now a lot of the big cities have seen some updates to the topography uh everything's a lot more detailed and by the end of 2019 they should have all of the major cities in the u.s covered pretty much um also there's new privacy features like um, location services, if I actually enable that, um, you can now have apps, um, if they ask for your location, you can allow it just once now, so you can have it ask every time, which is nice. Um, there's also new sign-in with Apple, um, just like sign-in with Google or Facebook, that'll be rolling out pretty soon here, and it's basically just going to create like a throwaway email so they can't get any of your information, so yeah, it's really cool privacy features. And Siri also has a new voice, so I haven't really noticed it much, so they might not have changed it yet, but if I say like, tell me a joke. What's big and red and wiggles in the sky? A jellycopter. So it still sounds pretty much the same, so I don't know if they've actually updated it yet. Other things here, you can now pair two sets of AirPods to the same device. I think you might need a device with Bluetooth 5.0 on it to do that, I think. Also, iMessage, I've got some new features here. So you can now edit your name and photo so you can be identified more easily when you're texting unknown people. And also, you do get support for an emoji on devices without a true depth camera. So if we go in, you can see, oh, there's a little glitch there. And another one here, so. Yeah, um, but you got your new Memoji tab um, for devices without a true depth camera. You can still edit them and do all that, make new ones. It's just not going to mimic your facial movements. And you can't send like the videos. You can just send these kinds of stickers here. Um, but it's nice to have on these older devices. And the App Store, a little bit different here. So you can see we've now got the arcade app or an arcade tab instead of updates your updates are now found in here i don't have any right now so they're not showing up um also we have voice control and you can see the accessibility section has been moved right to the front page of settings these all get new icons and we have this voice control it's not quite up and running yet um, it'll allow you to control all the functions in your device with just your voice. You've got text formatting tools in mail more personalized help app so we can see if it's gonna work. Again, it's glitchy. All right, so health isn't gonna load, but that's got some new features. Um, Safari, you can see it looks a little bit different here. New start page, and if we go to a website, you've got this new little text formatting. You can make it larger. And we now have support for AR Kit 3, which allows um, the device now knows the placement of objects behind or in front of other objects, so it's pretty advanced there. Um, we've also got fonts. This is also not up and running yet, but you can see here you can add fonts to install. And finally, the sharing options are a little bit uh, new, so you can see if we go to share an item, this looks all new. Got some different options, so yeah, pretty cool. And that is just about it for iOS 13. Again, it's a major update. I don't have time to cover everything, of course. Uh, however, it is going to be dropping support for a lot of devices that were supported with iOS 12. So, for example, the iPhone 5S and 6 are finally gone, and as well as the iPod Touch 7th generation and iPad Air first generation, iPad Mini 2 and 3. Also, the iPad does get a completely overhauled version of its software. It's now called iPad OS. It's still iOS 13, but they're just calling it iPad OS. Um, so that's pretty much a separate platform now. But a lot of the features talked about at the keynote 
available on iPadOS are available here on um, just iOS. So you can see we have like the three finger swipe to undo or redo. It's kind of glitched. Um, it's hard on the small screen. So yeah, there's that. Um, and yeah, just a lot of nice features um, that are gonna make improvements in your daily life. And of course the dark mode, which just looks amazing. Thank you for watching my iOS 13 review on the iPod Touch 7th generation. Hope that you did enjoy it and I'll see you again in the next video. And let me know if you want more coverage on iOS 13 here. And we'll see you next time. Peace.